Toma News presents Dress Code Violation. Kentucky girl sent home for exposing her clavicles at school. A Kentucky high school strict dress code has made headlines for the second time in a year. Late July, early August. After this girl, Stephanie Hughes was sent home for exposing her female anatomy, specifically her <sighs> collarbone. No sooner had the school year started than Stephanie Hughes was sent home on the second day of class. Her shirt violated Woodford High School's Victorian dress code, which requires students to wear crewnecks at all times. Stephanie wasn't alone either. Six girls got stitched up in the principal's office for showing too much bone. Girls think the school is hiding their bodies. Out of fear, a stray clavicle might give the boys an excuse to cut loose. Stephanie's mom, Stacy Dunn, tried to keep Steph in school and brought a scarf to cover up the teen's shame zone. But that was still too revealing for Principal Akers. And when Stephanie protested, she got sent home for her Kentucky Blue sass. Stacy Dunn was determined to liberate her daughter's collars and set about perfecting a new dress code for the school. She proposed skirts be allowed two inches above the knee and shirts are okay if they don't show cleavage, a compromise everyone can get excited about. Now the proposal is before the school board, and if they don't want Woodford High to be the subject of any more satirical animations, we suggest they bring the dress code at least into the 20th century. Yet another teen gets suspended for wearing inappropriate dress. Another teenage girl has been suspended for wearing an inappropriate dress at school. Yvette Rie, a high school student at Westside High School in Dayton, Idaho, got in trouble because of a mint green dress that's just a few inches above the knees. During class, teacher LeGrand Levitt told Yvette that she had to go home to change. She refused because she thought there was nothing wrong with her dress. Levitt allegedly threatened to call the principal and said Yvette's graduation would be in jeopardy if she didn't change to another dress. Yvette promptly called her mother, who drove to school with another set of clothes. Upon arriving, the mother and daughter found out that Yvette had already been suspended. Yvette complained on Instagram, and the story went viral. Yvette told reporters that she understood she broke the rules, but she and her mother felt the school acted in a tyrannical way. According to the school handbook, temporary clothes may be offered to offending students, an option the school ignored. Despite Levitt's alleged threats, Yvette graduated anyway and even wore the dress again on her last day of school as a congratulatory gesture to herself. Well, Yvette, you earned it, girlfriend. But in the future, let's have just a little more respect for the rules, shall we? Texas High School sends girl home for wearing leggings. A Texas high school senior was sent home on April 3rd for wearing an outfit that violated her school's dress code. And here it is. Oh my god. Well, that little hussy was just asking for it. 18-year-old Macy Edgerly thought her shirt and leggings combo met the dress code of Orangefield School District. But she was sent home because not 100% of the shirt's edge was below fingertip length. Shame. Her older sister, Erica, who graduated from the same school, wrote an open Facebook post defending her sister's right to dress comfortably without needing to worry about whether teenage boys will control themselves in her presence. The school is worried some boys will act crazy upon seeing the outline of a girl, so their policy is to send the girl home. Erica suggests onus be put back on the boys not to rape or sexualize women. The school district refused to comment on the incident except to say they are committed to maintaining a learning environment free from distractions. Okay, then why not start by blindfolding boys who can't handle seeing girls in leggings? Or else, apply the same standards to boys in their scandalously tight sportwear. Growl. Florida teen stripped of honors for wearing sundress. A 17-year-old Florida high school student was stripped of her honors after she wore a sundress while delivering her victory speech. Fort Myers High School junior Cameron Boland was voted in as historian of her school's chapter of the National Honor Society. She wore a dress with spaghetti straps to give her speech at Ida Baker High School, which is against the school's dress code, and that applied to her even though she doesn't go to the school. Cameron's bare shoulders apparently offended students at the school, who complained to NHS advisors about her outfit. The school then disqualified Cameron from her post. Cameron's mother said her daughter's outfit was not an act of defiance, but was an effort to look presentable. She plans to appeal her daughter's case at the school board meeting. This marks the latest in a string of incidents that have seen students punished for violating school dress codes. An 18-year-old Texas high school student was sent home to change last month when she wore leggings to class. While Idaho high school senior student Yvette Rie was sent home to change after wearing this dress. So do you think Cameron's dress is too risque and that she should have been stripped of her honors? 
posing with fake guns get teens into real trouble. These two high school teens got into trouble for a homecoming couples photo they took with these non-lethal airsoft weapons, but was the school overreacting? Tito Velez and Jamie Piera, both 15 years old, were dressed to the nines for their homecoming and wanted a photo to commemorate their day. Apparently, the photo was liked by several of their classmates and somehow made its way to their school's administrator a few days later. Bristol Plymouth School District officials hit the panic button and made a big deal out of the situation. Principal Carolyn Pearson, School District Superintendent Richard Gross, along with area police, yanked the couple out of classes and proceeded to search and question the pair before suspending them indefinitely. Both Velez and Piera say they got the airsoft guns for sport and have fun playing in a safe, supervised environment. They simply thought it would be cooler to pose with their toys rather than with flowers like everyone else. Superintendent Gross says he has a duty to protect the school. The caption under the picture read, Homecoming 2014, and could have insinuated that they were going to do something violent. So was this a prudent reaction or an overreaction? You decide. Gender equality demand. Junior high school girls wear shorts. Protests over student uniforms at Taizong's All Girls Junior High in Taiwan have continued this week as over 70 students wore shorts to school in defiance of the school regulations. And school officials have been getting their panties all in a twist over it. The school uniform does provide shorts as part of the uniform. However, students are not allowed to be seen arriving or departing from the school wearing the shorts. In other words, students must arrive wearing skirts and then change into shorts once they are on school grounds. Students have been protesting the regulation on the grounds of gender discrimination as male teachers and staff members are allowed to wear pants or shorts as long as they follow the school's dress code. The explanation offered by the school is that girls should not be seen wearing shorts to school because the shorts will outline a female student's butt. Seriously, haven't we moved on from women not being allowed to wear pants or shorts? It's also so hypocritical since the shorts worn by the students in protest are actually already part of the school uniform. Someone needs to tell these authorities to straighten out their priorities. This past Monday night, hundreds of police staged several raids on JK Stroll services in Tokyo's Akihabara district. JK is short for Joshi Kosei and is Japanese for high school girl. The girls would stay dressed in their school uniforms and call on passers-by to pay them money in exchange for their company while in the area. Dozens of underage girls were netted in the sting. While the girls are only supposed to be escorts during the JK stroll, the men will sometimes offer extra money in exchange for sexual favors, effectively turning the JKs into underage prostitutes. For the JKs choosing that path, anything from simple massages to kissing and full-on sex can be on the table. The 13 girls that were busted in the operation have been charged under the Labor Standards Act as they were strongly suspected of teen prostitution and working in a hazardous environment. Police are also taking further steps to clamp down on teen prostitution. However, there is no plan to totally ban the service as the majority of high school girls are simply acting as tour guides through the popular area. 13 underage girls aged 15 to 17 were caught in simultaneous raids this past Monday night. According to police, seven of them didn't feel they had done anything wrong. When police contacted the girls' parents, the majority of them responded that they knew nothing of their daughter's illegal lifestyles. Police also noted that they will carry on more night raids and will try to crack down harder on the illegal JK Stroll services. Students in Japan swap heterosexual uniforms. A Yoshida High Schools held an unusual event on November 11th, one that has sparked some interesting discussion. The activity and the day have been dubbed Sex Exchange Day, and students are allowed to come to school wearing the uniforms of the other gender. Participation is strictly volunteer, but it's essentially an opportunity where girls get to wear pants and the boys get to wear skirts to school. The event began in 2013 as a way to challenge students and commonly held social gender stereotypes. This year, there were 299 students who participated in the event, and surprisingly, there were more boys than there were girls. Some of the observations made by the female students were that they enjoyed their day in pants, whereas the boys said they felt cold all day since they were in skirts, and they found it difficult to remember to keep their legs together. And that wasn't the only problem with modesty that they struggled with. Some of the boys said that after this, they would appreciate some of the problems the girls in their schools struggled with. Hopefully, the idea is that those 300 participants learned something and won't be taking these kind of things for granted anymore. 
Men dress like women, and this is real Kazakhstan love story. In many countries, romance love is die, they say. But in glorious Kazakhstan, men still love women and women still love men, even when men dress like women. Ayan Zademov has girlfriend just 17 years old. She is nice. He is 20 years old and he is a good man. Girlfriend must take test for school, but girlfriend not happy because girlfriend not ready for make test. But boyfriend is smart like goat. He has idea where girlfriend's clothes and, uh, you say, uh, not real hair. Then go to school to make test for girlfriend. Everything is nice, but then uh, teacher ask him speak. When he speak, he sound like the boy, not the girl. He try sound like the girl, but is not possible. Now boyfriend must pay monies for government because he is girlfriend in test. More than 2,000 American monies. But men with business say he will pay half of monies because story is nice. So remember, Kazakhstan is not only number one for goats and sheep. We are number one for romantic. High school girls organized protest against unreasonable dress code. This week, a group of high school girls from McHenry East and West High Schools in McHenry, Illinois, are protesting via social media about yet another clothing restriction issue, this time about girls' sultry shoulders. Haley Everhart, one of the sophomores who started the protest, told NBC that if she wore a sundress, the administration would ask her to put on a jacket or leave class. Bearing one's shoulders is prohibited. Boys and girls who arrive at school dressed to make it through the hot weather are immediately shuffled off to detention and forced to cover up. Everhart and her supporters created a Facebook group to fight the problem. Their story even reached Seventeen Magazine and NBC Chicago. The group bashes the restrictive dress code which exists to avoid distracting boys from their studies. Instead, schools should be teaching boys not to sexualize girls. The group also told NBC that not being able to show our shoulders and being called distractions is directly influencing rape culture and sexualizing our bodies without our consent. The group claimed they are not encouraging girls to bear it all. They simply want the dress code to be reasonable and to eliminate shaming when it comes to clothing choices. A peaceful protest was arranged to take place today but was canceled due to technicalities. An Instagram page, Show Your Shoulders, was created to further the group's efforts. Girls as well as boys are invited to share pictures of clothes that got them into trouble. Teens jailed for 48 hours over wearing saggy pants to school. A couple of Boulevard, Tennessee high school students spent two days in jail last weekend after wearing pants several sizes too big for their hips to school. This particular sentence arose from an incident in early November when four students at Bolivar Central High School were charged for indecent exposure. Apparently, school officials have reprimanded these students several times already for the exact same offense. But it's still unclear how a mere school violation made by four students somehow resulted in two of them spending 48 hours in Hardeman County Jail. According to this handbook, the students were in violation of the school's dress code policy, which forbids low-slung, baggy-seat, baggy-legged pants, as well as bell-bottom. Local Tennessee news station WREG reports that most people they talk to in the community believe there are probably better ways to teach these boys a lesson about wearing clothes that fit. High school student takes his anger out on his principal's car. A disgruntled student who was unhappy about being reprimanded for a t-shirt he was wearing at school has been arrested after firing his gun at a high school principal's parked car. Witnesses say a shooter pulled up in the parking lot of Wagner High School in San Antonio, Texas at around 9.30 a.m. on Thursday. The student exited the car and began hitting the principal's vehicle with a baseball bat before pulling out a gun and firing several times before driving away. A couple hours after the shooting and after the school's lockdown had been lifted, the shooter called school officials and threatened to shoot at the school later that day. His threat prompted officials to place the school on lockdown once again. Local news station KSAT reports that the shooting suspect was later found in a neighborhood nearby the school and taken into custody without incident. Gay high school senior suspended over lesbian t-shirt. A South Carolina high school tripped over itself and slammed face first into the national spotlight last week after suspending an openly gay senior classman for her, quote, disruptive t-shirt. Brianna Papor, a senior at Chesney High School, on several occasions wore a t-shirt to school that reads, Nobody knows I'm a lesbian, seemingly without causing a riot. However, when she wore it again last week, she was called into the office where an administrator told her the t-shirt was disruptive and she could change into something else or be suspended for the rest of the day. 
Popor pointed out that there's nothing in the handbook that prohibits wearing clothes that reference sexual orientation. The unnamed administrator, who local news only reveal is a male, told Brianna that not everything is in the handbook. The exact text of the handbook, by the way, is clothing deemed distracting, revealing, overly suggestive, or otherwise disruptive will not be permitted. When Brianna's mother, Barbara Papour, demanded to know deemed by who, she says the administrator told her he does not like anybody in school wearing anything that says anything about lesbians, gays, or bisexuals. Barbara Papour found that policy to be discriminatory. Predictably, the school's overly specific application of the dress code has riled up the internet. The human rights campaign has set up a petition to ask the school to reverse Brianna's suspension. Twitter was also mostly supportive of Brianna, with user at Superhero15Mike lamenting her school's decision, while at Brandy Diem, possibly responding to a separate t-shirt sighting, seemed more territorial than offended. The school year is still young, so I'm sure we can expect more stories of dress code friction as America's schools are reluctantly dragged into the 21st century. Go Eagles! Canadian teen suspended for sexually distracting dress. A New Brunswick High School student was given a one-day suspension from school because the vice principal thought her maxi dress was too inappropriate. Lauren Wiggins put on a halter maxi dress and got ready for school on Monday. But when she got to Harrison Trimble High School, the 17-year-old was told to cover her upper back and arms. She refused. So, Vice Principal Shane Strugan, who thought her floor-length dress was too much of a sexual distraction for her male classmates, sent her to detention. Furious, the 12th grader penned an accusatory three-page letter, calling the school's dress code policy a symptom of, quote, rape culture. Next, Lauren uploaded her letter to the vice principal along with a picture of her outfit to Facebook, where the items both quickly received 1,000 shares. When a teacher later saw her post, the school slapped Lauren with a full day suspension. Her parents are outraged and think their daughter's dress was nowhere near provocative. They believe the school is discriminating against women. The dress code policy does not mention anything about maxi dresses not being allowed. Did the school go too far? Let us know in the comments below. Taiwanese schools make girls wear knee-high skirts in unusually cold weather. It's been relatively cold for long periods of time this winter in Taiwan, but it's been even colder for some Taiwanese schoolgirls because they have to wear knee-high skirts. While everyone is bundled up in puffy jackets, thick pants, and scarves as temperature dropped to as low as 10 degrees Celsius, these schoolgirls have to make their way to school with barely any cover for their legs. All because the school says so. One student from Daojiang Senior High School, a private school known for its skirt uniform, was so fed up with the school policy that she contacted the Apple Daily. She said the only uniform option is skirts, even during winter. This is rather unthoughtful as female students at most public high schools are given the option of pants and skirts when it gets cold. Just last month, the Ministry of Education issued a communique asking all high schools to abandon the gender inequality of the winter skirt uniform. While this makes some schoolgirls happy, others think the skirts look prettier, and some schools insist on preserving school traditions and won't make any changes to their uniforms. Skirt or pants? Which do you prefer? Virginia high school students offended by no longer having the right to offend. Students at a Virginia high school were suspended this week after holding a rally to protest new school policies banning their right to celebrate their antiquated Southern pride. A high school in Christiansburg, Virginia instituted a new policy earlier this year banning Confederacy symbols on cars in the school's parking lot. The school already bans clothing deemed insensitive to various groups and now, well, some students feel the school is going too far to encourage acceptance. Students argued that the establishment was infringing on their good old God-given American rights, but the school refused to back down. After 24 students dressed in clothing embellished with a divisive flag rallied in front of their school to protest the policy, the school swiftly slapped them with suspensions. One student told The Guardian that she thinks the new policies are preventing Americans from accepting real Southern culture and her rich heritage. The students were hit with only one day suspensions on Thursday, but after things became rowdier, two were slapped with three day suspensions for threatening and abusive language. Twitter reactions have been mixed, with some supporting the school's position and others failing to see why celebrating some interpretations of Southern culture is problematic. 
Standard Hotel in New York City turns away Navy officer. If you are ever in New York City and want to enjoy a relaxing drink, you should probably avoid the Standard Hotel. The hotel is famous for drawing celebrities and thinks it's too good to serve U.S. military personnel. On Saturday, a U.S. Navy officer visited the top of the Standard Lounge with her cousin and two others. But they were told the woman's dress whites didn't meet the Standard's dress code. It didn't seem to matter that this was Memorial Day weekend, and the Navy officer was on break from keeping the country safe. The group tried to appeal to hotel staff, but they turned a deaf ear. The Standard Hotel has since apologized, but is this a case of too little, too late? Do you think men and women in uniform face discrimination? Leave your thoughts in the comments. Social media sites, including Facebook and Yelp, are abuzz with negative commentary after claims that staff at an upscale restaurant mistreated a cancer patient and called police to eject his party from the restaurant, all over a dress code disagreement. The controversy surrounds an alleged confrontation over the weekend at This Morton Steakhouse restaurant in downtown Nashville, Tennessee. According to numerous scathing reviews online, a group of 16 had just spent more than $2,000 at a company Christmas party. When one of the diners, a cancer patient sensitive to the cold because of chemotherapy, donned a woolen beanie. This didn't sit well with the restaurant's assistant manager who immediately demanded he remove it. The man's colleagues explained he needed the warmth, but the unmoved woman told them he should have brought a doctor's note or have requested a private dining area. The man and his family agreed to leave, but it seems the assistant manager called police after arguing the point with his companions. Police arrived and the group were escorted out of the restaurant. Online comments from those present expressed outrage at being treated like criminals over the apparent dress code violation. For its part, the restaurant chain offered this comment on its Facebook page, which has received generally poor reviews. A male robber arrested for snatching scarves from schoolgirls in sailor suit uniforms. A male offender was arrested for seizing scarves from schoolgirls in sailor suit uniforms. The offender rides towards the schoolgirls from behind, takes their scarves, then rides off. This have occurred. The Hukuoka Prefecture Police discovered dozens of scarves at the suspect's house. But the suspect claimed that he purchased part of the stash. He has made 25 attempts to snatch scarves since autumn 2010. Many of the scarves were stolen from students from the 